Okay, so the countdown has ended. So this means that we can start. And um, I just want to say hello to everyone and welcome to the latest Treasure It webinar. Um, we're really glad that you could join us. Um, today uh, is a very special webinar because it's the second installment in our biannual Treasure It State of the Union update. Um, if you've joined us um, over the summer for that update, um, you'll be familiar with the format. Um, if this is your first State of the Union webinar, then buckle up um, because you're in for a treat. So, uh, my name is Olivia, and I have the privilege today of moderating this webinar. Um, as Treasurer its Head of Product Marketing, my focus is on connecting the dots uh, between the products we build and our customers to ensure that we keep developing solutions um, that actually meet real needs. Um, my co-hosts today are the wonderful um, Bube and Ferenc. Uh, Ferenc, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Olivia. So my name is Ferenc. I'm with Treasurit for two years as the product manager of the team, which is in charge of the administrative and control capabilities. And I just realized before the webinar that I'm wearing the same shirt, which I was wearing during the photo shooting, which you can see the results of. And please be aware that's <laughs> not my only shirt. And I'm handing over the mic to Bebe. <laughs> Thanks, Ferenc. Uh, so I'm Bebe. I joined Treasury 2013 as a member of our marketing team and moved to product recently. Currently, I'm the product manager of the team who's responsible for developing eSign and all related solutions. And I mainly focus on offering uh, secure and easy to use solutions for everyday workflow challenges. And I would like to hand back it to Olivia. Great, thank you very much, Bo. Um, so before we start, let me briefly outline what we'll cover in this session. Um, in the first part, we'd love to share with you a recap of all of the features and product developments of the last six months. Um, but stay tuned until the end, um, because uh, we'd also like to finish off uh, by giving you a sneak preview of our plans for 2023. Uh, over the past six months, uh, we have focused on two major areas. Um, you can group sort of what we've been working on in, in two major groups, um, giving our admins even more control and building out our suite of add-ons. So um, we're going to stay um, with uh, the admin controls for the moment um, and start with an update by Ferenc on all the latest improvements to our admin capabilities. So Ferenc, over to you. Thank you. So as you can see, one of the focus areas that we have and we are constantly having is user management because task, the daily task of an administrator is yeah, usually related to user management. And, and one of these tasks is uh, occurs when somebody has to change an email address, for example, because of a name change or it can affect the whole company if you're having an acquisition or if you are yeah, doing an, a rebranding. And with this account transfer feature, since July, you are able to transfer all the access rights of one account to, to, an, to another account. Obviously, you, you have to check all the necessary security restrictions. For example, if you are transferring from a business subscription, then the target account also has to be in the business subscription and you have to input both passwords, for example. This feature also available for the individuals. So if you are thinking about to choose a more secure email provider, then feel free and you can easily transfer your subscription to the new one. Uh, also relates to user management, a less, less happy part of the user management is the offboarding and folder takeover relates to the offboarding process because during the offboarding, the, the admin has two main goals, basically to revoke all access rights of the exiting employee or user and to make sure that all the company data re remains intact and nothing gonna be lost due to this exit so with the folder takeover the the, sec the securing of this data will be much easier as you can see it's a feature still in the coming soon phase but it will be released early next year and by early next year i mean early january in terms of advanced policy settings we implemented during Q3 the marketing email policy, which means from now on, you as an administrator 
can streamline which emails will reach your users. For example, we are sending product updates every few weeks, but if you don't want your users to receive those product updates and you want to be the source of the updates related to Trezorit, then you can simply disable those updates for your users. Uh, I quickly jump over to the roadmap just to say that I won't tell much about this roadmap feature because we will underline this new addition in one of the late last slides of the webinar. But uh, in the theme integration, which was quite a big chunk of development during the last two quarters, we enhanced the monitoring capabilities of Trezorid. We implemented an integration to this Microsoft theme, theme system called Microsoft Sentinel. And with that, you are enabled to forward the event logs created in Trezorid to your theme system to be able to monitor all your user activity. And if we go a few slides further, we can see the product in action in terms of the theme integration. Yep. So if you're an admin in Trezorit, it might be a familiar view for you, the settings tab of the admin center, where you can set up integrations such as single sign-on, provisioning, or the theme integration. There is a quite detailed description and documentation, how it works, how you can enable such integration, and which events can be forwarded to your theme provider. Uh, once again, currently we, we support Microsoft Sentinel. Please <clears throat> give us feedback if you need any other provider. So in terms of Microsoft Sentinel, you need to provide the workspace ID of your Sentinel workspace. You need to provide a shared key to authenticate to your service. And here you can granularly select which events you require in your system to be maximally sure that you can see and overview everything what your users are doing. After you selected the, the events, you can simply click done. And in case it would be a real account, then you will see a green message that you are successfully enabled SIM in your Trezorit account. Thank you. Thank you, Berens. Um, I am positive our audience already has questions for you. Um, so let's take a few seconds and a sip of water um, <laughs> while we give everyone an opportunity to post uh, their, their question. If you're joining this type of webinar for the first time, you'll see at the bottom of uh, your screen a Q&A button uh, you can use to type in your question um, and you can even choose to post these questions anonymously if you'd prefer. So um, we'll just wait a few, a few seconds to see if at this stage we have any questions. Okay, so um, I can see some questions um, coming through now. Maybe we can take just uh, one or two so that we can continue uh, moving, moving the webinar uh, along. Um, one question that we have for you, Ferenc, is are we also planning to support Splunk? And I think you started talking about this. Yep. <clears throat> so Splunk is on our roadmap. I cannot commit to any estimated time of arrival, but yeah, we are aware that Splunk is one of the big players in this industry. So we definitely wish to integrate to their solution as well in the future. At this stage, um, I think the best uh, course of action is for the show to go on. Um, so if you will allow me, I'd like you, um, Ferenc, to continue with an update on what's been happening on the email security front over the last uh, six months. So tell us, um, what's new? <laughs> Thank you, Olivia, again. So uh, as you might have heard, we've released several new products this year and one of those was the email encryption can we go one slide thank you so treasury email encryption also utilizes the same end-to-end -end encryption technology which we already used in the treasury core product it's currently available for outlook for windows and it incorporates such features as the yeah, branding options customization the revoking of emails or fast track access to your encrypted emails What's new in that front is we implemented encryption rules. So as an admin, you can set up rules for automatic email encryption for your end users. These rules can be based on external recipients, whether the user added an attachment or not. We also 
supporting large attachments. So you can add attachments up to five gigabytes with Treasury. And we also improve the usability and the UX of our add-on. So which we can see in a bit when we see the product in action. Yep, so you see your Outlook client and you, you can add recipients. And because we added a Gmail recipient, it triggered the encryption rule. So the Treasury email encryption is on. We can simply add an attachment via Treasury and we can send it to those two recipients. What we will see first is an internal recipient, which means we are in the same company, in the same organization, and we are both using Outlook for Windows, so they can simply open it in Outlook. In case of the Gmail recipient, they are redirected to our web portal where they can simply verify their um, um, authenticity via Gmail or via Microsoft. And here they also have the possibility to add a secure reply to our email thread, which we can easily read and save in our Outlook client as well. Thank you. Thank you, Thegans. Um, and now I'd like to move straight on to the other add-on uh, that's been keeping our product developers very busy, to say the least, um, Treasure It eSign. And for that, let me hand over to Bebe for an overview of the latest. Thank you. So in the next few minutes, I will cover three signature products my team uh, in Treasury is working on. The first is Treasury Simple eSign. It's, uh, it's our own easy to use document signing solution that speeds up signing agreements with, uh, without compromising security. It's an integrated add-on that can be bottled onto any paying Treasury plan plan and you can send, sign, collect and store within uh, an end-to-end -end encrypted platform and you can cut uh, all the third-party vendors uh, during this workflow. So, so we believe we can make com complex workflows uh, much more simple. Uh, we released this product in early uh, fall and September and ever since then we introduced uh, uh, we are introducing new features, adding new stuff uh, on two areas. First uh, is the admin area. So since the early release, uh, we worked on central control uh, improvements. There are cases when admins want to limit the potential users of Treasury eSign. It can be simply done uh, now by uh, setting up this new policy. And we are also working on reporting improvements to support those businesses who need, close, need to closely audit their workflows. We also added LTV, which means long-term validation support. Uh, it provides a record uh, of what state the certificates were at the time of the signing. You might ask, um, what certificates do I mean? So you might know that Treasury offers digital, a digital signature with uh, Treasury eSign, which provides a heightened level of assurance through a chain of verified digital certificates. It sounds scary. It's basically uh, a, a stamp uh, within the PDF itself, which uh, enables us to provide you a valid digital signature. These certificates expire and need updates. Uh, so LTV helps you to know that the signature will be trustworthy in five, 10, or even more years when the original certificate chain is long behind us, but uh, you still need to have uh, your document validly signed. So that's about simply sign. Uh, the second is the QES bundle, which is a qualified signature bundle. As a, secu uh, as a security first company, we believe that simply sign solution uh, we launch is a great tool to sign online. Uh, but as a part of our vision to create a one stop shop uh, and integrated ecosystem of secure solutions, uh, we wanted to, we recognized uh, the need to also provide an option for cases when stakes are higher and you, uh, and you need a legally binding signature, which equals to a handwritten signature. We are introducing this qualifying design bundle, which includes a treasury subscription and the Swiss ID sign subscription uh, to address this need on the Swiss market. Uh, and uh, it's available since 
mid last week. Uh, for now, you can find the product page on our website. Uh, there and and there is even more. So uh, where will the next year, 2023, take us? We will introduce a uh, qualified design that will comply with EIDAS, uh, which is a legal framework that regulates electronic signatures in the European Union. So it will be an other integrated uh, treasury solution, uh, which uh, it, but not a simple one, uh, what we launched this year, but a qualified one, uh, expect it uh, sometimes next year. And we will also improve our simple science solution, focusing on the feedback we received so far. And for example, one of the popular uh, uh, requests was uh, improving the visual display and the content of signatures. So this is where we will get started or we already got started uh, end of this year, and we hope to be able to release updates early, as early as the next quarter, so Q1 next year. Uh, after all the talk, let's see a quick reminder how Treasury solution, the, the Treasury design solution works, so the product in action. Uh, you can select uh, any documents uh, from your uh, treasury uh, or your file, uh, computer uh, at signers at expiration and share the link via secure channel. Uh, signers will need to verify themselves, uh, which means we offer three ways. Uh, if someone is a treasury user, a simple login or an SSO, or uh, a quick email validation, uh, if uh, someone is completely new to Treasury, so they don't have to hold a Treasury, so signers don't have to hold a Treasury account. Once the signer is validated, this is what you can see on the screen now, uh, they will be able to review the document and uh, review the document and click sign on the top right corner. And basically that's it. Uh, once we are done, uh, all parties will receive an e email notification about, about the completion and they will be able to download the document and will have access to it via the original link. And this is what I wanted to uh, tell you. Uh, you can learn more uh, about uh, about uh, Treasury Design via the dedicated webinar. You will find that on the webinars page or Treasury Knowledge Base. And don't forget that Bennett's already mentioned this, that we are always available for feedback. So reach out anytime. And I think I will hand back over for Q&A for Olivia now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Robin. And uh, now we would love to hear from you uh, with your questions to uh, Ferenc and Robert. So please post away. Uh, again, we'll, we'll have a short, uh, a few seconds break to give you some time to type. Um, don't worry, it's not a competition. We're not like timing how long you need to type your questions. I think if you don't mind, I would like to start uh, with a question about eSign. That was the closest Absolutely. in time. And then we can roll back to other ones. Uh, if I receive a document, the client asks me to sign, what would be the process? So uh, I just hit answer live now. Uh, so uh, the document, usually uh, signing requires you to agree on the tool you, uh, you will use during uh, the electronic signature process. So if the client has Treasury, they can create a, a link for you uh, with Treasury Design and uh, you will be able to sign via that. If you already have a Treasury account, it will, you just log in and uh, you can skip any other validation processes uh, with the simple eSign. So that would be an easy one. Uh, or easy process to go for. But I would recommend uh, agreeing uh, in the solution. So if you use Treasury uh, for otherwise collaboration purposes, I think it's an easy setup to do. And Berbet, I think uh, we have a couple more questions on the same topic um, that uh, that maybe you could help us answer. Um, mm -hmm. For example, um, to sign with qualified e-signature, uh, obviously we need to be identified um, so how does that work with our qualified e-signature solution, our existing bundle um, with Swiss ID mm -hmm. sign? With, uh, so there will be 
thanks for hitting the button. Uh, so, so this is why I wanted to highlight that the bundle is two separate products. Uh, what we do here is the purchase point is with Treasury, uh, but you will, if you are using uh, the Swiss ID Science solution, you will have to register an account with them and do the validation process via there. And uh, these validation, this validation process will always be separate uh, from the one that we will offer from next year for the EU integrated one, as uh, these are under two legislations. So, so once we talk, we start talking about qualified signature. We also sh uh, should talk about under which uh, legal jurisdiction is it qualified. This is why I highlighted the EU one. In case of the EU one, uh, our plans a plan is to uh is to integrate uh the identification completely with treasury as well so if you are logged in uh, or have a treasury account you won't have to create a new one but you will have to get your id verified it uh uh it will like work for for multiple years after one uh, validation of course the validity of the id card sets a limit or tops it uh in a certain extent Great, thank you. And um, obviously, um, there is the, the next EU, one. Yeah. EU, sorry, for the EU um, uh, codified e signature solution that we're planning for the next year, um, Treasurer uh, would be working with a trusted service provider to ensure uh, this qualified yes, status. Yes, we are also going under uh, an audit to, uh, to well, verify the connection to this uh, trusted provide, uh, trusted service provider. Uh, so it's not just their solution will be uh, audited and certified, but uh, the solution that we, how we are connecting to them will also uh, have this uh, proof. Thank you very much. Um, maybe actually to jump back a little bit and uh, Ferenc, maybe you can help us answer this. Um, I can see a few um, questions coming up uh, around how or when our email security tool um, will be available to different platforms, specifically mm -hmm. if it already integrates with Outlook 365, when it will be available on Mac. Um, so uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yep. We would like to broaden this solution's reach. So, yeah, currently we are investigating and researching that which platforms should be prioritized. But we definitely wish to support the M365 as well. Thank you. Definitely on the roadmap is the answer. Yep. <laughs> And uh, stay tuned a little bit, a little bit longer for the uh, 2023 uh, sneak preview, and maybe some of these questions will be answered as well. <laughs> Just going to um, go for maybe one or two more questions because I want to be conscious of people's uh, of people's time. Um, Berber, maybe is there is there one that you wanted to answer before we wrap up? And yeah. Then Bebe, uh, yeah. I'll give you an this one. Well. This one from uh, uh, from is e sign available on mobile devices too? Can you e sign on iOS or Android? Uh, we are working on releasing uh, the feature on major plat all major platforms, uh, and iOS is actually uh, Mac and iOS is actually uh, in the works now. I can't promise you that we will release it this year, but uh, certainly Q one is an is a target. Early Q one. Thank you, thank you. Um, Ferenc, is there one more question that you would like to take before we have to wrap up for, uh, uh, for this time? It's not really a product related question, but there's a question that are you going to publish a recording of this workshop for use of people who can't attend? And yes, it will be published on our website under the webinars page. And there you can find also all our previous webinars as well. Thank you, that's a very, very good point. Great. Um, so as I as I said, um, we're going to have to wrap up here for today. But if we haven't answered your question, don't worry. Um, we'll send you a follow up email with the recording today that you can also find uh, on the website. Um, but also a full Q and A um, that addresses all of the questions that we had today and and our answers. So if we couldn't answer it live, um, please uh, please look through that. Um, 
So um, to keep going um, with, uh, with the next phase of our webinar, um, I get to bring you um, a little early Christmas gift um, in the form of our 2023 roadmap preview. Um, and next year, we're going to be focusing um, on three major sort of like uh, uh, headline themes. And I'm only going to sort of give a, a little like sneak preview. Um, so the first is going to be again around user management. And there we're looking at simplified options to automatically transfer ownership of data. Um, so for example, again, in the case of offboarding your users, and um, we want uh, to offer more granular options um, for admin roles. Um, on the secure file sharing side of things, um, we want to continue enhancing our email security offering. Think about uh, new rules, for example, and rolling out our email security solution to new platforms. Um, Microsoft uh, 365 is on top of the list, followed by Mac um, and, and uh, other platforms. So this is a 2023 goal. Um, the um, qualified e-signature, Bube has introduced uh, Treasure its own Qualified signature for the EU market um, will be happening um, in 2023. And finally, uh, on the integration side of things, uh, we want to help you automate, automate a bit better the way that you manage uh, your treasure subscription and um, bring it together with all of your in existing infrastructure using um, APIs. So this is the little uh, sneak preview that I help uh, that I hope will um, help keep you going until um, until next year. Um, <laughs> so um, something that's very important to me as well um, is that uh, long term customers on the call will will probably know that um, at Treasure It we work very hard um, to make sure that we're building our products, features, and solutions not just for fun and because you know we like working on those products but to um, address real customer challenges uh, when it comes to collaborating securely in the cloud um, and this is why um, as Lance mentioned at the top of this webinar we've opened up our roadmap um, for business plus and admin uh, enterprise admins um, to access directly from the admin center so um, you now have a, a little button in your admin center um, to uh, get to this roadmap where you can see what features or enhancements we already have on our radar and crucially where you can submit new ideas and requests um, directly to our product team so it's kind of like your uh, red telephone um, to the uh, product team um, i and the rest of the team would love to encourage you to make the most um, out of that feature so that we can build the solution that you um, truly need. So let's keep the conversation going. Um, <laughs> so um, to wrap up, um, I have a, a few more sort of like uh, housekeeping things to, to tell you about. Um, and that is to save the date for our next live webinar, which will um, actually be um, a repeat, a live repeat of this session um, for any colleagues that you think need to see this but missed us today. Um, and um, really excited that there is a special guest appearance by Treasure It CEO, um, Istvan Lam. Uh, so he will be uh, joining us uh, in, in January. If um, you might miss us too much uh, until then uh, over the Christmas period, or if you want to get away from sort of the, the turkey and uh, all of that, um, <laughs> then feel free to go and watch our webinars on demand. Um, there's uh, there's a, a page, dedicated page on our website, and they're all listed there. All that's left for me to say is uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, there's an email address um, that you can reach us at um, if that is your preferred way of communicating. It's written on this slide. You will also receive it in a follow up. Um, but uh, again, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. We hope it was a beneficial uh, session. And thank you from me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.